How's everybody doing this morning? Everybody doing good? You nice and toasty and warm in here? Man, it's been cold. It was 21 degrees last night. It's pretty crisp. It's, it's cold. Well, right now, I want you to lift up your hands. Jesus, we exalt you. You are the king of this room. You're the king of this universe. You're the king of our lives. Right now, we yield to you. We yield to your presence. We yield to your spirit right now. I ask that you open up our heart. God, I pray that you would minister through me to the hearts of these people and the people online. And Father God, I count it as an honor to, to minister your word. It's an honor to be here, Father. It's an honor to be your child. Let your presence saturate this room. Let your presence saturate the rooms that are being ministered at home. Let your sweet presence be with us during this hour. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Can you feel God's presence in this room? Man, I tell you what, God is so good. First of all, I just want to say it's an honor to, to be here. It's an honor to to preach uh, in in our pastor's stead. We have an amazing pastor, don't we? Uh, yeah. Pastor Mitch, if you're watching, I uh, hope you are relaxed. I hope you are getting some good rest. And it's an honor to be under you as our leader. So uh, this morning, uh, I want to talk about um, being thankful in a world full of chaos. How many of you guys know this past year has been full of chaos, right? Uh, and just recently, I feel like our lives have been flipped upside down lately. Um, and I think right now, where chaos and division and strife seems to be at its highest uh, in our country, in our world, and even in our personal life, now is the time to focus our intellect on things we are thankful for instead of focusing on the negative things in life. So let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, if you have your Bibles. It says, Thank God in everything, everything. The Amplified Version says, no matter what the circumstances may be, be thankful and give thanks for this is the will of God for you who are in Christ. How many of you guys claim to be in Christ? All right. So this is talking about you. G Christ Jesus, the revealer and mediator of that will. So I, I present this question to you. Think about this. Why is it that we always remember the things God wants us to forget and forget the things God wants us to remember. <laughs> you know, think about that. Are, are we always thankful in every situation, in every curveball that the enemy tries to throw at us? I will honestly say in my situations, probably not. And I, I feel like the majority of us, we look at it in, in, in situations in our life and like, how can I be thankful? So for instance, if the president that you voted for didn't get into office, are you going to be thankful for the next four years? If you received an unexpected doctor's report, are you going to be thankful? Are you going to choose to be thankful in that situation? Someone who doesn't treat you right on the job or some, someone doesn't treat you right in your friendship, are you going to be thankful? You don't get that raise or that promotion at work that you thought that you were supposed to get and somebody else got it instead. Your teenager is going crazy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and I'd be safe to say the majority of us uh, in those moments is probably not the highest of your priority to react in, in a heart of being thankful. Um, we have a hard time staying thankful in the moment. What I've learned recently is to take in those sweet moments. Just recently in the past uh, four months, I think it was back in October, me and my cousin, uh, he's got two, two little, three little girls, but he took two uh, with him. And we went camping with our little girls for the first time. I cannot get Avalyn, okay, I cannot get my wife to go. She's, she's a glamper. If we, got, if we get a camper, she will go camping. But I cannot get her to go true camping. So we, we took the girls out. And I remember sitting around the campfire that night and just sitting and looking at John. John's my, uh, my cousin. He's a minister as well. We were sitting there talking and looking at the girls, just hanging out, just having so much fun. They had glow sticks. They were you know, chasing each other and just chasing the glow sticks and making all this stuff. And I just we just looked at them like, man, life is just sweet. And... How I uh, captured that moment is we took pictures, we took videos. We have to hold on and take in those sweet moments in life. And sometimes we don't take the time to do that. We don't take time to think about the good things that God has blessed us with. And we just kind of nonchalantly go throughout life. And um, 
I mean, guys, I don't know if you guys watched The Office, the, the show The Office. <laughs> it's one of my, I know it's, some of it's like, you, you either love it or you hate it. Um, but there's, there's a statement that Andy Bernard, Bernard, he's one of the, he's actually one of the least, my least favorite uh, characters on the show. And he said this statement, and uh, it rung, it, it was the last episode of the series. It says, I wish there was a way that you know you're in the good old days before you actually left them. Whew. And it's so profound of this, this stupid character. On the, <laughs> he says the stupidest thing, but that last episode, how, like, I wish there was a way that you know you're in the good old days and enjoying and taking in those moments before they leave. All right? Why do we tend to forget the good things in life and mostly remember the bad things? And we talk about this thing called negative bias. How many of you guys have ever heard of this, this statement called negative bias? Awesome, awesome. So the definition of negative bias is a psychological phenomenon in which people pay more attention to and give more weight to negative rather than positive experiences or other kinds of information. So psychologically, we're programmed to focus on the negative things in life which shows us that we have to make a conscious effort to stay in the mindset of being thankful for the good things in life. So, for example, if I got my brother Charles, he would come up here and I'd, hey man, I love this guy's shoes, I love this guy's pants, I love this guy's shirt, man, he's such an amazing dude, but I tell you what, man, this zit on the tip of his nose. (sighs) Brother, you need to pop that thing, man, for second service, man, it's distracting me. Which thing do you think that he alone would focus on. That big old zit. Man, it, it, it didn't matter what kind of compliments I gave him. Man, he's such a funny guy. Man, I love this guy. He's one of my good friends. But dude, that zit needs to go. <laughs> so how many times have you been complimented? Maybe it was like a, a, a review of your job and you get in there and you're just going through and the, the boss is like, you're doing this good. You're doing this good. But there's this one area that you may need to work on. And that, that one thing dominates your mind, right? All right? So let's go to Psalms 103, 1 through 5. It says, let, us, let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he's done for me. Listen, listen, listen to this stuff. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. So my next statement is, why did David, the psalmist, say, may I never forget the good things he does for me? Because guess what? He's, he's got a negative bias, just like me and you. He tends to forget. That's why the Psalms is full of praises and remembering the good things that God has done in his life. And there's also some things in, in Psalms that he's like cut off and smite thee and behead this person and may the rocks uh, cry out and, uh, and boulders go on top of this dude that, that, that was mean to me. <laughs> in other words, there was some frustration that he went through. That, so Psalms is basically a journal of the good things and the bad things that happen in David's life, but he chooses to focus on the good things. So this is why so many people are on antidepressants or in mental institutions, psychiatric wards, simply because they can't focus on the good things that God has done in their life. And the negative overwhelms the positive things. So let's go back uh, in Psalms 103. It says, he forgives all my sins. That statement right there should be the statement that we can focus on. Anybody in this room can focus on and say, you know what? If I can't thank God for anything that's happened in my life, my life is still, I can hold on to that one thing that Jesus has forgiven me of all my sins. Guess what? He didn't stop there. He said, I come to heal your diseases. He redeems me of death, tenderly loves us, and has mercy on us. Guess what? We deserve hell. In and of of ourselves, we deserve hell, but he showed mercy. Even when we were sinners, he died for our sins, okay? He fills us with life and good things and renews our lives. So we must be proactive in remembering the good things that happen to us. It's not going to happen to us, uh, you know, on a natural basis. And so just recently, uh, I got this idea from Bo Durham. Is Bo Durham in here? Usually you can hear. There he he is. (laughs) <laughs> um, he's, he actually has a praise jar at home. Uh, am I right? Yep. And so what he does is he has this jar, 
and this is, I, I've actually recently done this in my life, where I have a jar and we have no cards on the top. And he advised that, hey man, if, if there's anything that happens positive in your life, you need to write it down, fold it up, put it in this bottle. And over th- throughout the whole year, at the end, on New Year's Eve or on New Year's Day, I want you to take that out and pour it out and just start reading the blessings that God has done in your life. Because guess what? You're going to forget the good things that happen on a daily basis. And so this is a good way to remember what God has done in your life, physical things that, that God has done in your life. Bag it up and then put it away and put the year on it like 2021 and say, and whenever you need that encouragement, you go back to that year and say, man, let's see what God did. Oh, man, I totally forgot that God promoted me or I, I, for, I forgot that God healed my disease. And I forgot that because you have to do that because if you don't, you're going to forget about it. Okay. Um, I want to also tell a story about when me and Lindy were first married. Some of my teenagers know this uh, story because I've told it billions of times. But, but how many guys have ever dealt with panic attacks? You kind of know what that, that entails. And so I had never known what panic attacks were uh, until I got married. And <laughs> like the first day, Lindy married me. Also, she, ah! <laughs> I don't know how to take that. <laughs> I'm living with Cameron Peden. <laughs> ah! I'm sorry, Lindy. Yeah, she's not here. She should be here second service. But uh, there were real panic attacks to the point where she could not leave the room. The only thing that she could concentrate on is scripture, worship, and that's it. She couldn't hold a job. She couldn't do anything. I was just like, I thought it was just laziness. I was like, get your butt up, get a job. And I was, I was, I had my Pampers my husband pamper pants on. I just didn't know how to deal with this situation. I didn't think it was real until we actually went to the doctor. I was like, man, there's like chemical imbalances. There needs some, you know, some prayer. But during those, those panic, panic attack times, I'll be laying in the bed with her and she would be panicking. And I would sit there and the Holy Spirit told me to hold her and, and just say, hey, can you see? And she said, well, yeah, I can see. I said, that's a blessing. Can you walk? Well, yeah, I can walk. Guess what? That's a blessing. Not everybody has the opportunity to walk. Can you breathe? Do you have breath in your lungs? Yes. And I started one thing. Do you have a roof over your head? Yes. Do you have food in your belly? Yes. And so bringing those things to light and helping her focus on the good things that she has in life, all of a sudden those panic attacks just went away. And so what we have to do, we have to make a conscious effort to focus on those things. Even though it's little things, we may think it's little things, but I'm telling you, a homeless person last night, 21 degrees, having a roof over your head was probably the best thing that could ever happen to a person, okay? Don't, don't overlook the little things. Now, my next, my next point is strive to stay thankful in everyday situations. Let's go to Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with what? Thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus. Why are we so, why are so many of us only thankful for the th- good things in life only one day out of the year, Thanksgiving? Man, we're so, we're, we go around the, the table saying what we're thankful for, but do you, do you give thanks when things are bad? When things are good, yeah, you focus on the good things that, that God has done, but do you focus on the, the good things even when bad things are happening in your life? Um, we need to be in the mindset of being thankful in a, on a daily basis and in every circumstance, even when things don't go our way. Let's go to James 1, 2 through 3. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficult situations, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. Wow. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. Romans 8, 28 says, so we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan and bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his design and purpose. So every detail in our lives is woven together to continually bring the, 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 the perfect plan of God in, in, into our lives. So I'll just say this. Back in November, I had to be isolated. I had COVID, y'all. <laughs> it was probably one of the craziest times of my life. I, had, I chose to isolate myself um, because of everything. So I chose to isolate myself physically from my wife, from my child and stuff for 10, 10 days. And 
I'm telling you, it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. Because you know me, I'm a, I'm a sociable person. I'm, I, I love to be around people. I get, you know, I get excited being around people. And so at first I was like, oh man, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be rough. I'm not going to be feeling good. But it's going to be a good time to just kind of, you know, isolate myself and be away from everybody. After about two or three days, I started physically just, just feeling weird, man. Like, and I, 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 the, after 10 days, I, I think it was the ninth day, we were sitting as a family. We're, tur- you know, having playing a game. Of course, we were trying to, you know, isolate and, and, and not spread any germs and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my little girl just runs over to me and just gives me this bear hug. And I'm telling you, I didn't realize the value of a hug until I hugged my little girl. And I just, I just start bawling. And then afterwards, I was like, Lindy. And she's just like, whatever, just come here. <laughs> I started seeing value in the little things of a handshake and a hug that I'd never seen before. Even though, yeah, I had, you know, I was sick. I wasn't feeling good. I was isolated. But through that circumstance, also, I, I realized a whole new appreciation for our church being open. First of all, during this whole thing, our church doors have never shut, you know. Thank you, Pastor, for, for not giving in to the lies of the enemy to keep this, these, these doors shut. Because guess what? We need each other. We need the church more than ever right now. So I could not wait to run and get into church. I'll, t- I'll tell you what, that first prayer on Saturday, that, that first prayer service that had been, oh, man, it was so sweet. I was back there just bawling my eyes out, just appreciating being in the house of God, being around each other. And I started appreciating like the, the, the interaction of friends. I had a whole new appreciation of my wife during that situation. I had a whole new appreciation of my daughter over my mom, over everything around me. All of a sudden, everything just seemed like awesome. Whenever everything was over with and I started being around other people. But as you see in Romans, that, that first scripture uh, Romans eight twenty eight. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit God's perfect plan in your life. I don't believe that it was God's purpose for me to get COVID, not at all. But God had a, a plan, even though the enemy tried to come in and destroy my life, he used that to enter with and have a whole new appre- appreciation for, first of all, God's presence in my, because I'm telling you, man, my passion for Jesus only increased Went during that, that isolation. If only the enemy knew that <laughs> I was going to be on fire for Jesus, and that he probably wouldn't have tried to even put anything on me. Um, staying in the, the mindset of thankfulness and being satisfied in what God has already given us will preserve us spiritually, financially, mentally, and emotionally, and physically. So my next statement is, what happens if we don't stay thankful? What happens when we don't stay thankful? Not staying in a state of uh, being thankful for the material blessings that God has blessed you with today can lead to envy and spending more than what we have tomorrow, resulting in, in a mountain of insurmountable debt. Spending that credit card. Man, I just want to keep up with, this, uh, with, with my neighbor. Man, he has a nice car. I want, he has a, a nice home. I want to, he has a nice you know, video games system. And blah, blah. I want to I spend, spend, spend. And, you're not concentrating on the food that is in your cover. You're not focusing on the house that, you, that God has already blessed you with. You're focused on other people. So the second one is not staying in a state of being thankful for spiritual blessings today can lead you to drifting away from God's presence and relationship with him tomorrow. Not staying in a state of thankfulness of the salvation that Jesus provided for you on the cross. Just that what, what we seem as simple is the most amazing thing that could ever happen to our lives. But if we don't hold on to that, guess what? God's presence, we start drifting away from him. And guess what? We don't even realize how far away we are until we're, until we're way far away and we don't sense his presence in our lives. So third, not staying in a state of being thankful for the physical blessings that God has given you today can lead to hating your body, yourself, and living in comparison with other people. Man, I just wish I was that size, man, and I wish I had his his body or his, her her body, or da 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 da, and all this. You or I wish I could speak like him or do things like he does, and you you spend your whole life comparing yourself, and you hate your you, in, you end up hating yourself. Um, not staying in the state of being thankful can make a person's eyes drift from the blessing of their spouse into lust and adultery. If you're not appreciating the gift of your spouse and the good things. Because sometimes we can, uh, trust me, 
we can get to the, we can point out a lot of bad stuff about our spouse because we live with them. They're opposite, most, most of the time, opposites attract. So everything that at least my wife is, I am totally not. And so I can easily just say, hey, you know what? I don't like this about her. I don't like this. But I'm telling you, if, we, if you continue to do that, that's what leads to affairs. That's what leads to uh, divorces. It's not appreciating the, the, the value of the relationship that God has blessed you with. Okay? Last one is uh, not staying in a state of thankfulness for moments of mental clarity in life today can lead to deep depression and anxiety tomorrow. But God, I thank you, Lord, that I woke up. I'm in church. I made my way here. I thank you, Lord, that I have mental clarity right now in Jesus. And holding on to those thoughts. Because I'm telling you, the enemy can come in and totally destroy and try, and try to, you know, constant, help you concentrate on the negative things that he's done in your life rather than the positive things. Uh, have you guys ever heard of the akari? It's kind of an interesting word. Akari. Anybody? Okay. All right. So basically, it's the Hebrew word that means seeing the end result at the beginning. Okay? If you could only see, uh, going back to, you know, uh, this list of things, if, if, if I could only see if that, that first hit of that drug leading to my family being totally split apart, me being homeless, my, me not having a home, I would never touch that again. Or that first sip of alcohol would lead to me careening off of the road, hitting an innocent bystander and killing them, killing a family. I would never sip that first drink. Or that if I knew that clicking on that website would lead to my divorce, lead to my family being completely dispersed because of my mistakes and then leading me to an affair, would you ever click that first click? So just thinking about like, okay, God, I haven't, you know, yeah, I've messed up, and, but God, I'm, I'm still alive. I can still make decisions now to correct what I've messed up. Or, hey, I see myself going down this road, and I've seen myself, I, I have taken that first hit, I have clicked that first click, and I see myself going down this road. I don't want to end up what Pastor Cameron said. I don't want to end up with my family being destroyed because of this. It's not too late, guys. Okay? All right? Seeing the end result at the beginning will save yourself from getting into a lot of trouble, okay? Um, I also think that whenever I, I mean, I go get groceries all the time, and, and I'm, I'm, I, I try to stay in a state of thankfulness when I'm putting, putting up food in my cupboard. Say, God, I thank you, Lord, for these noodles. I thank you, Lord, for, the, <laughs> I thank you, Lord, for this macaroni and cheese. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, for this watermelon, right? That's healthy, right? And I'm telling you, as I'm putting stuff in my refrigerator, I God, I thank you, Lord, for this salad. I thank you, Lord, for this orange juice. I thank you, Lord, so much that I, I have food in my cupboard. I thank, thank you, Lord, so much that I have food in my refrigerator. I'm telling you, it keeps you humble. It keeps you like, I, I don't take food for granted, Lord. Like, I don't. And so, um, always be thankful. All, and also, I look at my, my little girl playing. Sometimes when I'm playing superheroes and I'm taking her and I'm Batman and she's Superwoman and I'm like, and I take in those moments and God, I thank you so much for a sweet girl that's healthy, that's, that's, that's kind, that's sweet. And so I don't take those things for granted. I look at my wife. She's sleeping sometimes. I'm just looking. I'm like, God, I thank you so much for a loving wife. I wouldn't be the man I am today if without her advice, without her counsel. And I truly believe, and I know that the Holy Spirit speaks through my wife. And I get teary-eyed I get because uh, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't take my wife for granted. At least I try not to. So constantly think about the good things that God has put before you. And don't take, it, don't take advantage of it. Okay? Amen. Amen. And a roof over my head. Like this morning. I, I mean, like last night, I think we came and we hung out with some, some of the young adults last night. And just uh, we came in and it was cold, y'all. I mean, it was, it was probably like, I think it was like in the 30s and stuff. And I walked into this nice, warm home. And I'm just like, God, and I literally said, God, thank you, Lord, so much for a warm home. Thank you for a warm bed that I get to put, I put the covers over my head and go to sleep. Thank you, Lord, for a great night rest. This morning I woke up, I said, thank you, Lord, that I slept so good. I don't take a good night rest for granted, you know, because some people are, are dealing with insomnia. So I'm telling you, living in a state of thankfulness and in God's love means that I can walk confidently forward without fear because I know that whatever trials, discomfort, or tragedy lies ahead, he will always be with me. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 31, 8. It says, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. 
He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. First Chronicles 28, 20 says, Then David continued, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. He will see that all of the work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. So for some, focusing on the bad things in life uh, have been home for you. That's all you've ever, you've been brought up in a home where the mom, the dad, that all they focus on is the negative. And you've been entrenched in this lifestyle of just focusing on the negative things in life or the negative things in people, and you pick apart people. Uh, you, you try to find the negative in every situation, and it's just a, it's just a, a home. It's a part of your life. Can I, can I advise you? Like, evict that, that negative thought. Evict that. I mean, you need, you need to find a new home, okay? Evict those negative thoughts. Say, Jesus, I'm sorry for seeing the negative in every situation and in every person that comes in my life, and I'm tired of this being my home. In the name of Jesus, I command these thoughts and I command this lifestyle to leave me in Jesus' name. And I want to put my home in you, Jesus. And help me to see life through your eyes instead of my own. Okay? I'm telling you, he will give you whole new eyes, a whole new perspective of life to where you're grateful. You're thankful for everything that that comes along your way. No matter if it's good or bad. Um, Also, people who always focus on the negative get more attention. Have you seen that? On Facebook? Uh, or Instagram, oh, my life is just torn apart and everything just seems to be all wrong. <laughs> Love, oh man, I'm just praying for you. And you know what? There's situations where, hey, you know what? You need to, fo- you know, you need to uh, focus on people that are going through life. But if every post is what you're going through and there's no praising God and there's no focusing on Jesus and what he's doing in your life, guess what? You're focusing on the wrong thing, y'all. Even though the squeaky, we were talking about this morning, the squeaky wheel always gets the oil. You know, are you doing that for attention for yourself or are you doing it for prayer? And that there's, I, I totally understand you need to, you know, reach out for prayer. I'm not saying that, but if that's the only thing that you're doing, you need a question. Like, am I doing this for selfish motives? Right? Think about that. All right. Um, if we constantly focus on what we don't have, something small will eventually turn into something big. Anxiety, depression, and fear will slowly creep in and gladly take over our lives. Turning the saying, making a, how many guys have heard of making a mountain out of a molehill, right? Something so small turns into something so big. But what you can do is something that is pretty big in your life, like a bad report from a doctor or something like that's pretty big, you can actually take that mountain and turn it into a molehill by focusing on the good things and literally writing them down and journaling, saying, God, I thank you, Lord. Eh, yeah, this is pretty big, but guess what, God? Back in 2019, you did this. You saved my life. Well, I could have gotten into an accident. Da 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 da. da. And that that what it seems to be insurmountable mountain in your life becomes a molehill. All right. So let's talk. Let's talk about our spiritual walk. How can I gauge my spiritual walk in all of this? All right. Having a heart of thankfulness is directly correlated to spiritual growth. Hebrews 11:1. 1, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. All right? So faith is seeing the best in people, even when you don't really see it. It's looking at that best friend or that spouse and say, man, I want to see you as saved. I want to see you as a child of God. And man, I know you're having a bad day, but God, I'm, I thank you, Lord, that it's going to be a good day today. And Jesus, seeing the, seeing the silver lining in everything. I'm telling you, it's not, it's not easy. That's why... That's why the Bible is, is thick, because <laughs> it's a lot to learn, okay? Um, faith is seeing a situation turning around for the better when you don't see it getting any better. So let's go to, Josh, uh, let's go to Numbers 13, 30 through 33. You guys heard of this story, Joshua and Caleb having a good report. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. He said, let's go at once and take the land, he said. Let's go in there. Let's take Canaan. Let's take it. We got it. He says, we can conquer. uh, We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who have explored the land with him disagreed. He said, we can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report among the land, among the Israelites. The land we travel through and explore would devour anyone who goes and lives there. All the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. 
Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought too. So they saw, they had a perspective that they were as small as grasshoppers, all right? So, and as you can see, like they didn't waste any time. They spread it throughout the Israelites. And they're like, hey, let me just let you know, we're like Israelites compared. I know that like Caleb is trying to get us, you know, all pumped up and everything, but guess what? We're like, we're, I'm just, let's not go there. No, we, we can't do it. Let, let's, let's see what the other report says. Numbers 14, 6 through 10, it says, Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh, tore their clothes. This is a sign of mourning. It's a sign of probably anger too. Um, they said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. He didn't say we'd have to fight for it. He said he would give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. I love this part. They are only helpless prey to us. It's a totally different perspective. They're helpless prey. These huge nine foot, 10 foot, 11 foot giants are helpless prey to us. They have no protection. Yeah, they ain't got no protection. They're giants, they're big and bad. But they have no protection, but, but the Lord is with us. That's a paradigm shift. It, man, I'm telling you, it's a doomed perspective on life. Man, yeah, these giants, these reports, these things seem to be huge in our lives, and they, they are naturally big in our lives. But guess what? The Lord is not with them. The Lord is with us. They are helpless prey to us. Okay? It's the time that we start thinking differently about our relationship with Jesus. God is on our side. God is with us. God will deliver the victory, okay? Uh, don't be afraid of them, but the whole community, guess what? It's stupid. The whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. So you thought, I mean, okay, let me, I'll get to this in just a second. It just blows my mind. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites. So God then descends and starts appearing to the Israelites at the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people treat me with contempt? Will they never believe me? Even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them. I split the Red Sea. I protected them from plagues. What more do I need to do to get across to them? I am with them. Why the heck are you believing this other, these other two lunatics that are saying, hey man, we're like grasshoppers. And wanting to stone the good message. How many of you guys know that like good, like bad messages are often neglected? Good news, you gotta fi- you gotta try to find it. And the crazy thing is, they wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. Stone the good news. Like it, that just makes absolutely no sense to me. It made me kind of angry at the Israelites. So do you see how the Israelites reacted? They wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb for having the good news. Why? Because they bought into the first lie of the negative report. They were like, yeah, this is our identity. We're like grasshoppers. And anything that comes against us, we're going to fight. We're going to stone. We're going to totally destroy because we want to see ourselves like grasshoppers, dang it. We don't want the perfect will of God in our lives. We don't want to see God's hand moving. We're comfortable right here. This is our home, and I'm going to stay right here in the wilderness where I've been for 40 years. Like, that, this makes no sense. They already saw themselves as grasshoppers instead of the giants being helpless prey before them. Also, God said, how long will these people treat me with contempt? Will they never believe me, even after all the miraculous signs that I've done? Guess what? What did they have? Negative bias. They had a negative bias. They saw things like, yeah, you know what? I know God. I know you delivered me, you know, from from the Egyptians, and you provided quail and manna from heaven. It was supernatural. That was cool and everything. Saw all the Egyptians drown in the Red Sea. Man, that was weak. We saw, like, you know, fish and stuff on either side when we were walking through dry ground. Dry ground from the Red Sea. Look at them. I mean, imagine going through the Red Sea with walls of water on the either side and not believing that God is with you and that he can conquer the giants. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But that just proves that we all have to strive to, to, to focus on the good things that God has placed before us. When was the last time you saw a miracle happen? Like, okay, like in, in that degree, 
Guiding, you know, you, the Israelites were guided by fire. Like all these miraculous things were happening. They, they forgot that. I'm, and like, I haven't, I haven't seen a miracle like that. I don't know if you, if you like, I would be like, okay, God, I'm, I'm, I'm courageous. I'm going to, you know, I believe that these giants are just going to be helpless. Pray to you. Boom, boom, boom. Like my perspective. But I have to realize they had a negative bias as well. And so if they had a negative bias, I know I have. I have to keep a journal. I have to keep the blessings of the Lord in front of me at all times. All right. So are you a person who always sees the glass half empty rather than half full? And are you always complaining about every situation and seeing the worst of everything and everybody in your life? Does the worst possible situation uh, dominate your mind whenever you, you know, uh, a situation comes in your, you know, your life? Are you focused on that worst possible outcome? <clears throat> or do you see the glass half full? Do you choose to hold your tongue when situations go south? Do you choose to see the best in people rather than the worst? Do you try to see the best possible outcome in every situation? So this, good, this is probably a good gauge of how you normally react and how your spiritual walk with God is, okay? Nobody's perfect, but you're kind of like, man, maybe I do focus on more of the negative than I do the positive. Um, and some will say, well, you know, I'm a realist. I live in the now. I live in the physical, man. I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, I've heard it. I've heard it. The majority of the Bible deals with situations and people who were not mentally uh, being realists. I would put them in a the category as dreamers. All right. Uh, sometimes dreamers throw logic out the window. Let's talk about that. Logically, it didn't make sense that a teenage boy would be chosen to slay a nine foot giant in uh, 1 Samuel 17, right? Logically, it didn't make sense that an old man and his staff would lead the Red Sea departing and millions of people crossing on the dry land at Exodus 14. Logic didn't make any sense of that. Logically, it didn't make sense that someone would spit on the ground. Imagine this. Like, hey, man, I, I need my sight restored. He says, okay, hold on. <laughs> Here, let me see your eyes. <laughs> and guess what? His eyesight was restored. Logically, that didn't make any sense. But see, God doesn't work in the logic. God works on the su- in the supernatural. All right? That's the way. That's that's. That's his special specialty. So the next one is being thankful in good times and in bad times. In Numbers 10, 19 through, I'm sorry, 10, 9 through 10, it says, When you arrive in your own land and go to war against your enemies who attack you, sound the alarm with trumpets. Then the Lord your God will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. Blow the trumpets in times of gladness too, right? Sounding them at your annual festivals and at the beginning of each month, the blow the tr- and blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and peace offerings. The trumpets will remind your God of his covenant with you. I am the Lord your God. So this scripture tells you that even times of war and in times of peace, you're going to sound the trumpets. You're going to worship me because I don't think that God forgets that he has a covenant with you. I think this is more for us. Whenever we sound the, whenever we're having worship up here and we're praising God, we're reminding ourselves of the covenant that we have with the heavenly, our Heavenly Father and who we serve. This is a good reminder that our, of our covenant with our, with our Savior. So a life of complaining will eventually lead to bitterness, envy, and then eventually unforgiveness. Then finally hatred sets in. Okay? How many guys know people that are like that? Maybe you kind of look at, me, look at yourself. Man, maybe I do hold on to unforgiveness. Maybe I, you know, I don't have any friends in my life because I'm a hateful person. <laughs> I hold on to a lot of stuff. And guess what? I want to let you know, Jesus is here to set you free from that. He doesn't want you to live in that anymore. Okay? <clears throat> God says in his word that he will inhabit the praises of his people, not complaining of his people, not bitterness of his people, praises of his people. Psalms 22, 3 says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. Can God inhabit your life on a daily basis with what you talk about and how, how you interact with people? Question yourself. Like, man, can God interact with me and can he settle among my conversations with the people that I, I uh, come in contact with at work, my friends, whenever we're having private conversations? 
Or am I spending most of my time talking and breaking apart people in my life and gossiping and slandering people? God can't in- inherit that. God ha- can't inhabit that. So if you kind of look at your life man, and, and find out, like, man, it's, I have a broken life. Everything just seems to be kind of chaotic and chaos seems to be attracted to me. Kind of look, look at yourself on a daily basis. I would say take a journal out and say, like, write down the good things that, that you've done during that day and write down all the, the not so good things that you've done that day. And write down how you talk and whether it be good or bad and just weigh it out. Say, man, God, I got some work to do. I, I slander this person. And then maybe there, need to, there needs to be some restoration between you and other people. Say, man, I, you don't know this, but I've been talking behind your back. I've been slandering you, and I've been, and guess what? <laughs> My life is complete chaos right now, and I'm sorry. And so examine your heart and just weigh out the things in your life and, you, and take it to Jesus. First of all, ask, for, ask Jesus to forgive you. Say, Jesus, I know that I have a negative bias, and the way I'm treating people in my life, I know that it's not how you would treat them. And the only reason that I'm treating them the way that I am is because I'm mad at myself. And sometimes you need to forgive yourself for the mistakes that you've made. And the only reason you're kind of lashing out at people is maybe it's because you're having a bad day at work and they're treating you bad and you're taking it and you're not being thankful. You're not seeing the silver lining and everything. Maybe you're taking personal criticism, like constructive criticism, and turning it in a negative way. Because there's good, there's good critical uh, conversations that we need to have about our personal life, by the way we work, by the way we conduct our lives. And if somebody's coming in and just saying, hey, you might need to work on this. And you say, well, they hate me. And, blah, blah, blah. and the, you don't remember all the good things that they just said about you. You're just concentrating on the negative things. And you're using an opportunity where God can strengthen you. God can correct the things in your life and, you know, set you free from a lot of things. And you're using it. And the enemy is tearing it apart, and you go deeper into that unforgiveness and that bitterness. So that's why you need to use every situation in your life and say, God, how can I use this? Can I put this on a shelf, and maybe I'll need it for later? Or can I use it right now? Deal with my heart. Break, up, break off all the offense. Break off all the, the, the bitterness in my life and help me to admire and worship and, and be thankful for the things that you've already done in my life. Okay? All right. You guys Good? All right, let's see here. Um, the nation of Israel complained for 40 years, about to close, <clears throat> um, and it got them nowhere, absolutely nowhere. Philippians 4, 8 through 9, it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice All you learned and, what does it say? Received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Man. So I want to tell you three things to do as you you leave here. I want you to put some things into practice. Number one, ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of the good things in life. Sometimes we we can't think about it because we don't ask God to, to remind us. Ask the Holy Spirit in every situation, Holy Spirit, help me to see the good things that you've done in my life. Number two, start a praise jar. I think uh, Pastor David has, has done it as well in his family. Like I'm doing it in my life. Go home, get a jar, get something that you can hold and put, put right on the counter where, you, where, you, where you're at every single day that you can say, man, I, I need to write down some, I, I need to go home and write about 10 things that God's done in my life that I haven't even given him praise for. Start putting them down or write a journal. I take a lot of pictures all right, you probably saw I take a lot of pictures and I post them on Facebook. The reason I do, I don't do it like, oh man, look at me. I'm, 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 it's a journal for me, for me to go back and look at. I look at Instagram the other day and I was just like, I just need to see some good things in my life. And I, and I, 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 I saw some funny videos that me and Avalyn have done or me and Lindy have done, and just seeing pictures, it reminds me of the blessings that I have in my life. Okay, number three, take communion regularly. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 24, it says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Okay? 
I did this during the time where I was isolated. Me and my wife, we were at home and we had communion together. We, we didn't want to forget the good thing that he, he had done for me and, and Lindy and my family. He died on the cross for your sins. He's redeemed you from sin. And I didn't want to forget that. Let's, let's all stand up. Father God, I just thank you so much for your life. I thank you for your goodness and the good things that come when we follow you. And also there's some, t- <laughs> there's some things that, that are challenging. Whenever we decide to follow you, there's some bad things that happen that we perceive as bad things, but it's only to strengthen our lives and to draw us closer to you, Jesus. Help us to recognize that, distinguish what is from you and what is from the enemy. God, right now, I pray that you would deal with everyone in this room and in, in, in online that has that negative bias in their life that seems to cloud their life. Um, I pray that you would break that by the power of the blood of Jesus right now, that they would ha- operate in the mind of Christ and the joy of the Lord to be their strength, God. Help them to see clearly the good things that you've done for them in the name of Jesus. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen.